Hey guys, welcome back to the Glide tutorial. We're on the third episode right now and we're gonna start laying down our shop. So let's head over right inside of the menu scene. We've got a lot to do in this episode, guys. So what we're gonna be doing uh, right off the get-go is actually try to split those little scenes, try to split those little uh, menu right here in three different parts. The one we see right here is going to be the main menu. Now on the right-hand side of this, I wanna see the shop. So over here, I wanna be seeing a shop and on this side that's going to be the level selection so we're going to need to split this apart in our canvas what i'll be doing is to create a new panel under the canvas just make sure it's at the very top here and i'll call this main menu now on this panel make sure it is um, just fitting everything so expand and everything is on zero and then i'll just take everything that isn't the fade image and just put it beneath that this way we have one object that contains the whole main menu now. So I'm also going to be disabling this image right here so we actually have we have the same exact result as we had earlier, but now it's all being contained in a single object. We are going to be doing the same for the shop, so I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Ctrl C and Ctrl V. This main menu, let's drag it above the fade, and this is going to be the shop menu. Now the shop menu is going to be a little bit different, of course, uh, first thing we need to do is to make sure that the left over here is on 1280 and that the right is on minus 1280. This way it actually just um, it actually just moves it one scale to the other side, to the right side. So this is what we have right now. Of course, we are not going to be using the splash screen and also those buttons in here. We are going to be deleting everything that goes inside of the shop menu for now. Let's start from scratch. So inside of here, we're going to be needing um, two things. We're going to be selling skins, or actually player color, and also special trails. So that's going to be behind the player. That's going to be following the player. Right now, I'll just be enabling this image so I can actually see the whole thing. Um, but we're going to start laying down those things right now, actually. So let's go ahead and right click, create a new panel again. And this panel is going to contain all the colors. So I'll call it color panel in this case. Now, I want this to be taking half of the screen, so what I'll be doing is make sure I anchor it on this very right-hand side here. Also, move the pivot point, so holding Shift, and then I click. And then what I'll do is just make sure the width is uh, half of the screen size, so I'll do width divided by two. And here we go, so that's gonna be the color panel. Now, as far as the height goes, same thing, I'll do height divided by two, and here we go. Actually, what I feel like doing is anchor it at the top right hand side right here so we can just put the position Y on zero. So that is my color panel right here. If I just duplicate it, this one's gonna be the trail panel. I change the anchor point to bottom right and then put the position Y on zero. We end up with something like this. So we actually split um, our screen in four, in actually three different sections. So that's gonna be the preview zone. That's gonna be where we buy the color and that's gonna be where we buy the trails. Now, under the color panel, I'll be creating a single button. So let's just right click right here and do a new UI button. And that's going to be for a skin. So let's just call it uh, color. Now, of course, the placement of this is all wrong and it's not going to work out the way it is right now. So let's start cleaning it up by removing the text component inside of it. And now, as far as the scale goes, we don't actually need to modify it since we're going to be using a component that does that. So on my color panel, I'll be adding a grid layout group. What this is going to do is just make sure everything is square and then it actually fits uh, the setting right here that I put. So let's put a spacing of say 10, 10. Um, to visualize this, we are going to need more colors. So to do this, let's actually click on color, do a control C and control V to duplicate. And now just duplicate this for the amount of colors you're gonna be selling. In my case, I'm selling 10. And if you wanna be following this tutorial, uh, the same exact way, just I recommend that you do 10 for now, we can do more later on. But at the moment, we're only going to be doing 10. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. Now the way you can actually order this around, uh, you can actually order this around any way you want, uh, just by modifying the, uh, the grid layout group. But this layout I actually like quite a lot. Let's just make sure we put some settings um, Back on normal, so starting axis, I'll be putting that on vertical. The child alignment is going to be on middle center. And also make sure that there is a constraint on the 
amount of fixed row, so that's going to be two, and it just looks like that now. So everything is centered, and it looks good to me. So I'm actually going to leave it right here and do the exact same thing for the trail panel. So I'll just take all of those colors, paste them, put them inside of the trail panel. And this one needs a grid layout component as well. So grid layout group, actually. I'm going to go over to the color panel, right click on grid layout, copy component, and then paste component as values. Now, as far as the trail goes, everything right here is called color. Might actually want to delete that, call this one trail, and then duplicate from there. So we have our color buttons, but we still need one more button, and it's the one to actually buy or select the color. So what I'll do right here is under shop menu, create a new button, and this one's gonna be, um, it's not gonna be a children of the color panel. I'll just be putting it up there with the color panel, but it's not gonna be a direct children of it. So I'll just be putting that on say a width of 300 and a height of 50. That's gonna be for the color. So something amongst the line of that, let's put it right here. And I'm gonna be changing the text inside of it for something like color by set. Later on, we're gonna be modifying this uh, via code, but right now this is all we need to do for this button. Let's actually call this color by set so we know which button it is actually. And that's also duplicated. And that's gonna be the trail by set. We can actually drag this down right here. And of course, change the text as well. So trail by set. So it actually looks something like that. Now, however, what's going to happen when you actually build this to um, a smaller screen is that you might not actually be able to see this button or you might not actually be able to see um, the, the whole thing because it's being cropped on the very edges here. So this might be cropped, this might be cropped. So I'll actually just move them more uh, a little bit in the center. So somewhere around, around here. And for the color, I'll just move this down as well like this. Now, as far as the panel goes, I can now remove it since I know where my things are. Same thing for the trail panel and it's gonna be a little bit more center. Now, of course, you can play around with this as much as you want until it looks good on your devices. All right, so that's a lot of UI, but we need to balance it out with some code right now. So we're gonna head back inside of the menu scene and start coding a bit. What we're gonna be doing in here is a few different things. First, let's declare to public float, oh, sorry, no, public transform up here. One's gonna be the color panel, and of course, the other one's gonna be, you probably guessed it, that's the trail panel. Okay, so we have these two in memory now. We're gonna be needing them a little bit later on to add a uh, function to our buttons. But if we just head down here, just in between the button section and the private void and the private start, uh, we're gonna be creating another function that we'll call private void initialize shop or init shop. What this function is going to do is when the scene starts at the very beginning, I'd like my game to actually go on every single one of those buttons we manually created and put a function on top of it. So whenever you click on it, it actually calls a function. So this is what the init shop is going to be doing. And we wanna be doing it when the start happens. So at the very beginning, in the start, add button on click events to the shop buttons. The way we do this is by calling initialize shop. And now we need to start laying down the logic. So this logic is a little bit complicated to understand if you're um, new to Unity, but let's go ahead and just try to explain it as best as we can. So at the very beginning, let's just, just make sure that we've assigned uh, the references. References, okay. So if color panel is equal equal to null or the trail panel is equal equal to null, we're gonna do a debug.log. You did not assign the color slash trail panel in the inspector. So the only person that can make this mistake is us as the designer slash developer of this game. It's something we need to do, but I'm going to just put it in here because I know I'm gonna get some comments about null reference error. <laughs> Um, but in case you get that debug.log, it means you did not put 
the references and we're going to be doing that very soon at the moment we have not put the references either so just after that we're going to do for every single children so for every single uh, children transform under our color panel find the button and add the unclick event so we're going to start by declaring a new int i which we're going to be using as a index and then we'll do a for each transform t in color panel so for every single transform inside of the color panel now remember um, the color panel is this thing so for every single transform in this transform that means all the children's for every single children we'll be getting the button component now button is not going to be highlighted it's not going to work you need to include unity engine.ui so at the very top right here using unity engine.ui once you have this you can say uh, you can start declaring a button so button b in this case is equal to t which is the children get component get the, the component of type of button and then we're going to go ahead and just add the unclick event. Now, something weird that happens when you add um, a unclick event with a parameter is that it just doesn't always work. So what I'll be doing right here and just tag along with me is to define another int. Um, in this case, it's going to be called current index is equal to i. We need to set this every single time. And I'll try to explain why in a second. It's going to be for unclick event. So be the unclick add listener. And then you do a predicate. I'm not asking you to understand this as it is really complicated. And then we create a function called on color select and we send our current index in there. Now, of course, the on color select is not a function we currently have, so we need to make sure we create it either by just manually typing it or doing a control dot. And it's going to generate one for us right here. One last thing we need to do before we exit that for each loop is a I. Okay, so let's just keep going really quickly. Um, we're gonna do the same exact thing for the trail, but beforehand, let's reset the index. So i is equal to zero. And then we do the same for the trail panel. In which case, we're simply going to copy and paste. But instead of doing for each transform t in color panel, we'll be doing it in the trail panel. And then do we need to change anything else? I don't think we do, except this function right here, of course, the on color select. We're going to be changing that for on trail select. Again, it's not available right now, so we'll need to create it. And there it is. So we have both our function right here, the on trail select and the actually it deleted the old one. So let me quickly put that back in on color select. And I'll be manually just creating it so it doesn't do that again. And here we go. So we have our function right here. Um, and they should be automatically added to our buttons as soon as the game starts. Well, not the game, but the menu scene starts. Now, since we want to be having some feedback in there, and since those are buttons, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be just moving them down there in the button section. Uh, whenever we select something, we're going to be doing a debug.log selecting color button and then let's do two dots like that and actually add the index so button index in this case or current index same thing for the on trail select but instead of doing selecting color we'll be selecting trail button and finally there is two more buttons we totally forgot about and uh, they have to be public because they're gonna be actually assigned from the inspector. It is the public void on color by set. So that's the by or the set button. And of course, there's the other one on trail by set. So I know there's a lot of code in this episode, guys, but it is needed as we're gonna be just making sure everything works, everything is linked properly. Um, but yeah, we're almost done. So debug.log by our set the color or finally debug.log by our set the trail in this case so we need to do our final modification to our scene to make sure this works we're going to head back inside of unity click on our color by set and let's make sure that um this button right here the color by set button has the unclick event of the menu scene and then under menu scene again, we have on color by set. 
Same thing for the trail by set. We're going to need the menu scene. And there we go. So we have everything we need. Everything should be working as expected. Let's go in the, um, let's go under the preloader and actually launch this game again. Now what happens is I totally forgot to actually assign uh, my, my references. So we did get the error. We actually fell into our own trap. So let's go over to the menu. And under the menu, I'll head over to the menu scene and make sure I assign both the color panel and also the trail panel. So canvas, main menu, oh wait, canvas shot menu. That's my color panel right here and that is my trail panel right there. Back to our preloader scene, we can now hit play. Then we get the nice three seconds intro back into our game. And now we have no means to try out our new buttons because they are outside of bounds, they're right here. So what I'll do is I'll cheat a little bit. Uh, while the game is playing, I'll just move this out of the way. So I'll disable the main menu and I'll just move this one so we can test out um, our game. So what if I click on the first button? It says selecting color button zero. Now one, two, three, four, five. And it just goes on like that. So as you can tell, we're getting a different index every time we click on a different button. So that is working. Let's see if the trail is working. So all the trail buttons are also working. Now the bicep, color bicep, and trail bicep. So everything is working, everything is linked. Now, of course, we need to fix the uh, the fact that our camera is never gonna be looking at the shop right now, but at least everything that we've created in this episode is linked somewhere and is working. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, uh, share it with your friends or check out the Patreon page or I don't know, just do something cool that is going to help me out making more tutorials and we can all be happy and leave comments and do stuff like that. So again, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.